Don't scab for the bosses, don't listen to their lies. As poor folks haven't got a chance, lest we organize. Which side are you on? Hey. Which side <laughs> are you on? Howdy. I'm still tired from my weekend trip, so. Phoebe went on a trip. We did. It was very nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you had fun. Thank you. Glad you uh, didn't at all get thrown out of club. No, not not even a little bit. (laughs) Didn't get 86 from a club. Yeah. (laughs) We're fine. We're doing good. It's fine. Everything's fine. fine. It's Everything's chill. fine. Everything in the world is fine. The stories we're about to tell you is like nice, good stuff and mm-hmm. not like a huge, gigantic bummer. So don't worry yeah, about it, you guys. It's yeah. going to be fine. For sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's how, how it be. Um, the remarks guarantee never a bummer, always uplifting. Yeah, for sure. Trying to think if there's anything else uh, I've been doing I can mention for the intro. <laughs> the intro. <laughs> not really. Not really anything too crazy. Yeah. Had a nice little gay weekend. Yeah. Gay weekend. Happy Pride, Happy everybody. Happy Pride, everyone. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Go be gay. Do crimes. Yeah. Be gay. Do crimes. Um, As long as they're like cool crimes. Yeah. Yeah. Not like, I don't know. Not like murder. Extortion anybody. or something. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, don't. Well. I don't know. Like, yeah, if you're going to murder someone, murder someone that deserves it. True. Um, commit tax fraud. That's a good one. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, vandalize your mm-hmm. local um, McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Some light arson, if you yeah. will. Yeah. Allegedly in Minecraft. Yes. Do all these things. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. In real life, don't even dream of it. No, never. Never, never do that. <laughs> Um, well, I'm Phoebe. And I am Taylor. And this is Remarks. The podcast the you podcast. are listening to with right now. your ears. Yeah. I listen to podcasts with my eyes. <laughs> I listen to podcasts with my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> like earphones in, in the uh-huh. badge. Yeah. <laughs> it's because of how sexy all the hosts are. Yeah, I know. You have to, yeah. I do. Put your whole pussy into... Quite literally. Listening to podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, as we spoke about last week, this is just the continuation of our stories from last week, um, talking about mass shootings. So, Ooh, yeah, like fun. we were saying, it's, it's going to be <laughs> another rough one, everyone. And good. <laughs> yeah, really great. Really but good, good, good. I do stuff. think it's important to talk about these things. It is extremely important. There's always, like, a few mass shootings that get, like, big public attention. Mm-hmm. And honestly, to the it's getting even to the point where, like, you see a mass shooting happened and then it's just like, oh, another one. And yeah. then you don't even look into, like, the reasonings or, like, yep. why it happened, you know? I know. Because you're like, oh, it's probably some fucking crazy ass right wing motherfucker yep. that did this thing. Like, yeah, like, I don't know. It's definitely, it's rough. <laughs> it is. I Well, and it's just, like, there's ones that you don't even hear about anymore like they'll go over these things in the media and there was one i can't remember where it was of course because there's too many to Mm -hmm. keep track of but i think it maybe not in oklahoma i don't remember but anyway there was like several mass shootings in this city and they literally had to like choose which ones they were going to like publicize things about because it was like it's just too much yeah that's it's (laughs) Uh, it's unfortunate but yeah, yeah so that's why i think it's important to really dive into these things oh, and sure. see like what's going on you mm-hmm. know because it gets when you see like a million news stories about it i don't know like you get numbed to it yeah like spoiler alert i'm talking about the one in buffalo oh that happened yeah and like i heard about it i didn't look into it until i was doing research yeah. for this episode and yeah. now i'm like oh shit like this is gnarly so yeah i know i, I didn't really know much about it either so so yeah. yeah. Anyway, take it away. I will take it away. Um, again, as I was saying last week, I was talking about school shootings. And so I'm just going to continue on that path today. Um, so I'm very sorry for the stories that I'm about to, de- to tell today. They're truly some of the most devastating moments in American history. Losing a child in any capacity is some of the most unimaginable pain in the world. Um, and losing anyone in a mass shooting is just an incredible loss. Uh, But when the two intersect, it's something that no rational human being can ever really move on from. So, December 14th, 2012, in Newtown, Connecticut, 
the fourth deadliest shooting in America and the deadliest shooting at an elementary school was completed, leading to the murder of 27 people, 20 of which were children between six and seven years old. Uh, um, <clears throat> this was, of course, the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary. Similar to many other school shooters, the Sandy Hook terrorist killed a family member before leaving on his rampage. Uh, using guns that she had purchased, Adam Lanza killed his mother, then took her car to Sandy Hook Elementary. Armed with a Bushmaster XM-15 E2S rifle, along with 10 magazines containing 30 rounds each, two semi-automatic pistols, and a shotgun, he shot through the security system at Sandy Hook Elementary and immediately killed Principal Don Hotchsprung and the school psychologist Mary Sherlock. He then entered two separate co- two separate classrooms killing the teachers and the students and then subsequently killing himself uh the amount of weapons and ammunition that lanza had access to at home was shocking not only did his mother own the ar-15 he had used to complete the attacks at sandy hook as well as the other three firearms he carried she also owned a .45 henry rifle a .30 enfield rifle and a .22 marlin rifle investigators also found over 1400 rounds of ammunition um, while all of this was legally owned by Nancy Lanza, a stated gun enthusiast, the sheer amount of weapons and ammunition is, as we've kind of stated before, and we'll say again, just wholly unnecessary. Who needs access to that many weapons and definitely not that much ammunition? Um, and certainly never an assault rifle, uh, which was, of course, the terrorist weapon of choice. Um, given that he did carry all three guns, the only one that he did actually use was the AR-15. Um, using the Bushmaster, which is the AR-15, Lanza was able to fire 154 rounds in less than five minutes, and the entire rampage spanned about 11 minutes total. In all of that time, that was all the carnage that he created. He was able to kill 27 people in around 10 minutes, Jeez, maybe. Man. And that's because... It's an <clears throat> assault rifle. Yeah, I mean, and it's you a can rifle. Just spray bullets. Just created for murder. <laughs> yeah, it's created. F- it's literally created for mass murder. Yeah, nothing it's else. Kind of the yeah, the thing. Mm-hmm. Um. So prior to the attack, Lanza had barricaded himself in his room for about three months, blacking out the windows and supposedly never coming out of the room at all. Um, He had cut off contact with his father and brother, and would only communicate with his mother, who he lived with via email um which is alarming i think Mm. um he was on several forums with other mass murder enthusiasts and he had apparently downloaded videos pertaining to the shooting at columbine high school as well as photos of other shootings and a video of a suicide by gun um also found on his computer were photos of himself with a gun pointed to his head as well as guess what folks a document titled Selfish, detailing how Lanza believed in the inherent selfishness of women. Oh, there it is. There's always a piece. There's, there's there? always something. Like, I swear, to, it's like every story that I've looked up, it's like, oh, and he hates women. Oh, also he hates just women. Just like, yeah. throw that in there <laughs> for no reason. I just, I think it's insane how, like, you can have somebody who's barricading themselves in their mm-hmm. room for three months. Mm-hmm. And I know that, like, this was an adult person. Yeah. But like, and you just are like, yeah, they're fine. Like, yeah, like, you know, uh, it's, it's cool. They're just, they're just in their room all the time, blacked out the windows and are mess- communicating with me by email yeah. in the same house. This doesn't seem like anything I need to look into or call a wellness check for. I know, like, I know. And like, I don't know exactly what was going on in that house, but it's like, it was three months <laughs> and it, the, this, dude has had like severe mental issues throughout his entire life Mm -hmm. so it's like this is you know that should maybe alarm you a little strange you may want to look into this Mm -hmm. perhaps maybe um also found in lanza's bedroom was a massive spreadsheet with information of about 500 mass murders including the weapons they used um lanza is yet another example of someone who had an obsession with mass murders prior to carrying out his own and whose behavior was alarming leading up to the murders um so following sandy hook several pieces of legislation were attempted to be passed in the wake 
Um, The proposed assault weapons ban of 2013, the bill banned the sale of more than 150 specific firearm models, as well as magazines that held more than 10 rounds of ammunition. This is obviously a very logical bill to want to pass. (laughs) Put through after something like that, for sure. Um, As well as I don't think that we really need magazines that are going to hold more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Um, And so even with the overwhelming support from the general public for this bill, it was squashed in the Senate with a 60 to 40 vote. So. Yeah, especially around that time, too, when Mm -hmm. it was like very, yeah. Because when, what, what, what year was this? It was 2012. 2012. So yeah, yeah, it was kind of like the Republican, like it was the, the lead up to like Donald Trump, you know, and that yeah. whole vibe. So I, I understand. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like Obama was president and he, I don't know, he was very sympathetic. And I do believe that the man sort of tried to get gun control um, happening. I know that was a big, like, issue for obama um but you know that doesn't say anything for the senate and the True. supreme court so yeah um another proposed bill would have mandated criminal background checks for guns uh sold over the internet or at gun shows uh but this too was rejected which is absolutely insane like how are we not requiring background mm-hmm. checks for any and all purchases of a gun yeah, I mean, ever because yeah, like private sales and gun shows, you don't yeah. have to do any kind of checks there. That's fucking you can crazy. Walk into a gun show and just get one. Yeah, it's ran- it's wild. Which again is one of my many reasons why we don't fucking need gun shows <laughs> and shouldn't have them. Gun shows are definitely kind of strange. It's a They're strange, vi- weird <laughs> thing weird. that we do. Um, another one of my biggest issues is the selling of guns um, online, not only by manufacturers but also. Particularly particularly with the sale of guns over personal ad websites like KSL, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, for our out-of-towners, KSL is sort of like a Craigslist. It's where people can <clears throat> sell, like, a bike and things like that. And also, guns, apparently. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this is just an obscene oversight by our government that should have been removed, like, years ago. This should not be happening at all. And it still happens to this day. Uh, The fact that I could meet up with someone in the parking lot of a fucking McDonald's and become the proud new owner of an assault rifle is just an absolutely fucking wild concept with no, uh, like, registration, nothing. Like, I just meet somebody in a a weird, dark parking lot and I say, give me that gun. Here's a hundred bucks or whatever. And then I walk away with it. Yeah. Like, meet me at the Wendy's on 90th South. (laughs) And they're like, all right, yeah, bring the gun. I got the money. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty insane how yeah like that's very unregulated that whole mm-hmm, market there mm-hmm. and that's like of course going to lead to you know and i mean even like beyond the scope of mass shootings it's just like that's like arms dealing basically yeah <laughs> like well and that's like the funny thing too is that like you know i feel like people say a lot of the time like oh if you you know put bans on guns people are gonna get them illegally and it's like well i agree like some people Mm-hmm. We'll get them illegally, but also, I don't think a lot of people know how to like go to the black market exactly. and get like you know the cartel guns. Like exactly, <laughs> most of the time when people can't like get past a background check, they're probably going to go to a gun show yes. or get it online. You know, yes, like hundred percent. So it's like I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's not really. I don't think people think about that part of the argument. Is right. like, would you know at this moment how to go and like buy a gun from like a drug like a drug lord or something yeah you know? like, like an how- underground resource exactly probably like you probably not. don't you probably know how to get on fucking craigslist though yeah like- <laughs> and i mean it's like every one of these shooters the guns are obtained somewhat legally like he was using these guns that his mother had but they were legally owned yeah so- exactly Ugh. Oh, for sure. And that's not even to say, because I don't think you should ban guns. I no. think there is a certain level of gun control that everybody agrees with, like mm-hmm. background checks and things like that. But um, but yeah, I don't think that you should ban guns. I think guns no. are, are an important thing for people to have access to in certain situations. But however, <laughs> I do think that, you know, everybody can kind of agree that like background checks are something that need to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, periodically, if you're going to be owning and buying firearms exactly exactly uh the last piece of legislation in response to the massacre was a measure 
um, to restrict the sale of large capacity ammunition feeding devices. So that's magazines that hold more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Um, and so that was just for that that piece about the, the magazines, mm-hmm. um, which, of course, was also rejected. Uh, the NRA once again received criticism for their complacency surrounding these devastating events. And in response, the NRA advocated for the implication of armed guards into all American schools, despite the fact that uh, many schools already have assigned police officers or other armed security. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that, again, like, you're going to pay somebody to just, like, sit there all day. Also, where is that money going to come from? You, the NRA? I doubt right. it. It's probably exactly. going to come from our already underfunded school system. <laughs> exactly. And, like, who's going to train all of these people? And who's going to, like... Yeah. Mm. It's def- Yeah. And it's... who's going to ensure that, like, these school police officers aren't just, like, bullying kids mm-hmm. more than they already do? <laughs> um, a bit of a bright spot, at least in the legislation. Um, about a year later, on April 3rd, 2013... Uh, the Connecticut General Assembly signed a, or sorry, passed a uh, 123 page major gun control bill. The governor signed the bill on the same day. So this bill requires universal background checks, um, a high capacity magazine banning the sale or purchase of ammunition magazines capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Um, it created the first registry in the United States for dangerous weapon offenders added over 100 types of guns to the state's assault weapons ban. Um, And during this entire thing, pro-gun groups rallied outside of the Capitol to protest the signing of this bill. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. And then you also had Alex Jones saying that the parents were faking the deaths of their children during this whole event, which I think is lovely. Yeah. So so good of Alex Jones to do that. (laughs) Which I do touch on a bit. Oh, Um, hell yeah. So uh, some of the families murdered, some sorry, some of the families of the murdered children and adult school staff banded together to create a nonprofit called Say Something. Um, they advocated for gun control legislation and mental health awareness. And some of the group's work was for an expansion of criminal background checks, support for violence and suicide prevention programs in schools, and a ban on high capacity magazines. Um, nine of the families of the lost children moved to Sue Remington, who is the ma- manufacturer of the Bushmaster AR-15, the gun that was used in the attack. Um, firearm companies are notoriously difficult to sue. <laughs> Big yeah. shock there. They are protected under the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act, um, which basically makes it like almost completely impossible to sue them. Uh, But the families were eventually able to make a case against Remington's advertising campaigns, saying that Remington sought to, quote, expand the market for its assault weapons through advertising campaigns that encouraged consumers to launch to launch offensive assaults against their perceived enemies. And this case took eight years to conclude. And it wasn't actually until this year in 2022 that Remington finally settled with the families for seventy three million dollars. That's good. Mm, Yeah. I mean, that's something, I guess. Which then they apparently also filed for bankruptcy, which I was like, hmm. are you bankrupt, giant gun corporation? <laughs> are you? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, like, what the, like, gun sale uh, yeah. stats are there. but. <laughs> um, And then, as I had mentioned in our episode on right-wing assholes, the families of the Sandy Hook victims also sued radio personality Alex Jones, which... Woo-hoo! Yeah, there our it boy. is. <laughs> when we had our episode on uh, those guys, I talked about this during that whole thing. Yeah, our uh, man's. <laughs> absolutely just off his fucking rocker. Truly. <laughs> uh, he spread conspiracies that the shooting was a hoax and that the families and the lost children were crisis actors. <laughs> I just, there's it's... like no words for... What the fuck, dude? It's such a specific level of evil to just be like, oh, yeah, your kids died? Ugh, bet. You know, like, (laughs) it's just so fucking fucked. It's so fucked up. I don't know. (laughs) Like, you you have to be, yeah, operating at a... Yeah. (laughs) I I can't even, like, get words out of it. I mean, but granted, again, it's Alex Jones' job to be fucking insane. Exactly. People (laughs) people literally give him money to be insane. So they do. They do. What you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, he also said that they had fabricated the entire thing in an attempt to remove the Second Amendment. 
Um, so Jones was sued for defamation and eventually paid a total of $126,000 to these families, which is fine, I guess. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what again, punishment really can we better than nothing connect it's, to yeah. this type of. Well, that's the thing is it's like, you know, again, like money and things like it's, it's, it's okay. Like it's, it's better than nothing, of course, but like. I mean, you know, your kid died. Like, nothing's going to yeah. bring your kid no. back. And it's, no. you know, it's, I don't know. It's it's hard because it's like, yeah, somebody should have to give compensation. And, like, there should be consequences for mm-hmm. these things. But nothing's ever going to be good enough. No, you know? of course not. Of course not. <clears throat> uh, following the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting was when I first remember the argument being made for arming teachers. <laughs> Which is yeah. just uh, an absolute, like... That's the craziest response you could ever possibly have to this, which I think we talked about it in maybe the last episode or maybe I've just been yelling about it for a few weeks now. But it's like, first of all, where are you going to store that gun? Second of all, who is going to train these teachers when like armed guards and armed police officers can't even stop shootings like this? Um yeah, this is just a horrible idea for several reasons, but I think that the most recent elementary school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, uh, serves to prove how adding more arms to the problem will not solve a thing. Oh, for sure. And, like, I mean, it's also, you know, I know that there's arguments that are being made that, like, oh, if you have a, if you have somebody else who has a gun on the premises and then, like, you know, someone does arrive to stop the shooter, which, mm-hmm. you know, Granted, the police officer in the most recent one didn't do shit. Uh, they did, like, <clears throat> it's like it can get confusing because you also have a gun and you're, like, you know, trying to stop this person. Mm-hmm. There's other people who, you know, again, presumably are going to have guns to stop this person. It gets real confusing real quick. Exactly. And, and- you know, again, you're a teacher. Your job isn't to use a gun and you know right. have to def- yeah i don't know it's to just... be like an armed protector yeah. of these kids like they first of all not getting paid enough for that oh for sure <laughs> at all and second of all it's like our teachers already have like so many extra jobs on top of mm-hmm. what they do that it's like let's not add fucking putting themselves in the line of fire to that as well yeah well and like in signing up to be a teacher like again nobody signs up and is like oh i'm gonna have to shoot someone someday like exactly it's just uh, i i don't know it's it's unfortunate yeah and it's just a redirection of Mm -hmm. not wanting to fucking make a single change in this entire thing but you know it won't force you to carry a gun (laughs) (laughs) Uh, anchor podcasting app. Ads, baby. Ads. <laughs> <laughs> what if uh, what if we did get a sponsor and we were sponsored by like Remington? Oh my god, It'd be real funny. <laughs> be, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, good times. <laughs> anyway, ads. We're back, back, baby. What up? What up? Uh, yeah. So bad things. <laughs> yeah. Things are bad all the time. Really rough yeah. out there. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Should I just get right back into it? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the yeah, best yeah, yeah. course of action. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, I am going to talk about the most recent shooting in Uvalde, Texas. So, on May 24th, 18-year-old Salvador Ronaldo Ramos sorry, uh, nearly killed his grandmother by shooting her in the head before heading to Robb Elementary, where he crashed a pickup truck into a ditch near the school and then entered the school and killed 19 students and two teachers and then eventually was shot by officers on the scene. Um, Damn, so he, he nearly killed his, his, you said his grandmother? Yeah, which so yeah. she survived. She survived getting shot in the head, which Fuck. is insane. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah, and his weapon of choice was again an AR-15 style rifle, mm-hmm. as well as seven thirty-round magazines. So here we are again with these high-round magazines. Um, that would have been really great to get some legislation passed around, but couldn't yeah. happen. So here we are. 
Um, prior to the shooting, Ramos would post on a French social media site called Yubo. It would be videos of himself abusing animals and videos threatening to kidnap and rape girls. Again, there's that piece. There it is. As well as threatening to commit a school shooting. So pretty right out of the gate. I just. It's it's right see, there. The thing that is so frustrating is like the FBI, the whoever the fuck you want to talk, like whatever government agency, like they, we know so many of these shootings, like these people are like radicalized and pushed to do it online. Yeah. But they never look in the right places online. Like exactly. You, I don't. And again, like I know our fucking government sucks, and people suck, and the internet sucks. Everything fucking sucks. <laughs> but like, it's just it's so frustrating because again, like that what we still have fucking eight chan or yep. it's called eight coon at this point, like up and running, mm-hmm. and no one does a single fucking thing about it. And then yeah. I don't know, like the FBI will re you know like look into something super not like super fucking stupid and like exactly. waste so many resources on exactly. it exactly it's like but, we know that these are the places that these things are happening why yeah. are you not doing something it's about like, it if we literally have the fucking nsa <laughs> what can't they like instead of collecting like random data from cell phone companies could they like go on to fucking reddit and find <laughs> some people that are yeah, talking about shit go like on this our like, red pilled and like <laughs> yeah, exactly. look for fucking incels that are like i think i'm gonna shoot someone <laughs> yeah today's the day like yeah. if we if we're if we have to have the fucking nsa can they at least be doing shit like that i don't yeah, it's know exactly <laughs> but again as we were saying last time it's like literally every time that these people do something like this they go online and they say it outright <laughs> So all their fucking friends are online and yeah. they're in these chat rooms of people and fucking forums of people that are like, yeah, do it. Mm-hmm. Like they're, it's a fucking terrible fucking cesspool of yes. pieces of shit that like <laughs> push each other to mm-hmm. like be they more like radical. They rile each other up. Yeah. It's how radicalization happens. Exactly. Um, he also frequently harassed his female coworkers at Wendy's, sending them inappropriate text messages. So again, there's that. Woo. Always have to throw in yeah. some classy sexism in there true because it's not a real shooting unless the shooter hates women oh my god (laughs) oh god um he frequently posted on instagram about wanting automatic wanting automatic rifles and then when he did purchase the rifles a week prior to the shooting he posted a picture on instagram three days before the massacre so again, there, there it is. It was all it's out in the right open. there. Yeah. Um, he bought a Smith and Wesson semi-automatic rifle and another AR-15. So he bought, uh, firstly bought this Smith and Wesson semi-automatic rifle, and then three days after that, bought another AR-15 style rifle. Which even that seems like they should have to Why, like, have yeah. a period between buying two mm-hmm. extremely volatile, yeah, killing machines. Like, like. why do you need? I don't know. Um, And then a day following that, he purchased 1,657 rounds of ammunition. Yep. Which, why are you allowed to purchase that much ammunition in one fucking round? But whatever. Um, Just before the shooting, Ramos messaged a 15-year-old girl from Germany, which I don't know what relationship was going Mm -hmm. on there or why he is talking to her, but okay. Um, He messaged her on Facebook and said... I just shot my grandma in the head, and then another message that said, "I'm gonna go shoot up a elementary school." R N. Wow, very casual. Yeah. Uh, how old was this fucking? Eighteen. Fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Oh, well, that's 18 good. Eighteen years old. Yep. I'm gonna go shoot up a elementary school. R N. Like, it's just <laughs> the casual way he says that, and also yeah. immediately before that, going, "I just shot my grandma in the head." Just. Hey, 15-year-old girl from Germany, just yeah. in case you wanted to know, I guess. I tasu- casual text conversations. Like, yeah. Couldn't put, couldn't put right now because they had to save yeah, time. Yeah, like, I know. <laughs> like, what the fuck, Jesus dude. Christ, dude. Um. So the reports about the timeline and the events of this shooting have been controversial and confusing. According to a Wall Street Journal article that I couldn't get full access to due to a fucking paywall. Um <laughs> So that's great that I can't get important information about this. Uh, The shooter was actively shooting outside the school for a full 12 minutes before entering to then complete the massacre. Once inside the school, he entered a classroom and according to initial reports, he had barricaded himself in. Um, This initial report slowed police response time, having officers under, for whatever reason, the impression that there were no more murders occurring. 
This was fatally wrong, and the shooter remained in this classroom for about an hour, being able to complete the 21 murders. So there was a news report. There was, like, a report from the police to other police saying that he had, like, barricaded himself Uh, into this classroom or something, and then... That report eventually, like, hit the news yeah. pretty quickly after, which was wrong. The so, police are stupid. <laughs> well, oh, God, yeah. And I mean, it gets so much fucking yeah. worse with this. Um, But, yeah, and so it's, like, all of this news that was coming out, like, at the time was just, like, all of it was, like, wrong and weird and, like, misleading. And so all of these people trying to get information about what the hell is going on, mm-hmm. it's all, like, mixed up and wrong. Um. Follow-up record- reports claim that the classroom door had not been barricaded at all um, and was actually just locked, something that should not take o- officers an hour to break into. Um, but, you know, they stood outside for an hour anyway. And then another follow-up report stated that the door had never actually been locked even at all. Oh, wow. So it was so, just open and they were just standing might out have been. there? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so f- stood there for an hour in front of this classroom door doing... Nothing, apparently. At one point, an officer allegedly said out the classroom door, uh, or s- from outside of the classroom door, he said into the classroom, yell if you need help, to which a girl responded, help, resulting in her death immediately after. Because fucking of course, you stupid pieces of shit. They like let her, they like let the shooter know where she was. Right, because all of these students were like hiding or pretending to be dead mm-hmm. or whatever. And then it's like, of course, when somebody's saying, hey, yell out if you need help and you you're are a child say. and you need help, mm-hmm. you're going to say that. But that's going to get her killed. And if you actually are a smart person who you should be, if you're a fucking police officer, you would think to not do that. Is you so? would maybe just bust into the classroom and yeah, try and ramify this situation. But It's so crazy that like so it's so wild because, you know, I know that police officers are always so good at their job. Right. And like they do good work all the yeah. time and they never like, you know, are... Um, menaces to society no not at all so yeah this is just yeah this is just such an anomaly it's crazy (laughs) um with Uh, over 100 officers responding to the scene as well as on staff officers why did it take an hour to confront the shooter why when police were called when ramos had crushed his truck crushed his truck into the ditch had he still been able to enter the school Um, Parents began to, understandably, get increasingly frustrated and terrified by the lack of communication and the conflicting reports. Some parents were having to wait up until late into the night to find out the fate of their child. Um, Other parents at the scene were upset by the seeming lack of action by the officers. A father of one of the children, who his child luckily survived the attack, told CNN, quote, I told one of the officers myself, if they didn't want to go in there, let me borrow his gun and a vest and I'll go in there myself to handle it. And they told me no. I mean, yeah, if it's your kid that's in there, yeah. I mean, I understand where you're coming from. You're like, I will go in there and right. fucking shoot this guy like who's trying to kill a bunch of kids. Like, yes. I Yeah, I get what that guy, I, I get it. I don't mm-hmm. know. Police had cordoned off the area in front of the school, which combined with an hour of inaction increased parents' anxiety. Many parents were pleading with officers to enter the school themselves to try and save their children. In response to this, officers tackled multiple parents, including pinning one to the ground, Jesus. which there's video evidence of. Oh, no. A very normal thing to do. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Officers threatened to use tasers on several parents and ended up pepper spraying one parent. And then eventually did taser one parent who attempted to get her child off of a bus that was filled with children who had been removed from the school and had thus far survived the attack. Oh, my God, so, dude. I can't believe yeah. there is an active shooter yep. in a school. Yep. And the police are like, let's, <laughs> Jesus let's beat Christ. up their parents. Let's beat up their parents. Let's do a little fucking <laughs> pepper spraying their parents. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If this is, like, not the most, like... Blatant, blatant act of like why police mm-hmm. are fucking clowns. Mm-hmm. I don't like if this won't convince you the police are a fucking joke. I don't know what fucking exactly. Hell, like. like it's so <laughs> holy it's shit. So it's just it's it's not unbelievable. It's cartoonishly stupid. Exactly. <laughs> like exactly. Holy shit. Oh my gosh. You get this. It gets it gets, it so gets worse. Oh, oh yeah. my god. Oh, it gets way worse. Um, another mother was momentarily handcuffed. And after being removed from the handcuffs, hopped the fence to the school, removed her children, and left the school before police had even entered the school at all. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, 
Reports have come out that some of the officers entered the school to free their own children while other parents were being physically assaulted for attempting to do the same thing. Oh, wow. That's really, that's mm-hmm. really fun. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's like as if having a fucking school shooting isn't bad enough. Mm-hmm. There's also this on top of it. I know. You have to deal right. with cops that are cops. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Exactly. Cops it. doing cop things. Yeah. Uh, just cop tings <laughs> mm, being evil <laughs> a video yeah. clip posted online shows parents asking officers why they weren't doing anything to save their children and an officer replies because i'm having to deal with you i don't think that's true yeah i, I don't think you have to deal with anyone no. if you were dealing with this the shooter yeah yeah <sighs> yeah The conflicting and alarming reports about this massacre are upsetting, to say the least. On top of already losing 19 children and two teachers, parents had to be tackled, pepper sprayed, handcuffs, and then had to receive multiple reports from officers that made the situation all the more confusing and terrifying. Governor Greg Abbott, (laughs) who's just, just a real peach, commented on the situation during a press conference describing the event as evil, intolerable, and unacceptable, but then followed that up by saying that the shooting could have been worse. Oh, wow. (laughs) If not for the actions of law enforcement, who he described as having a quick response and showed amazing courage by running towards gunfire, which (laughs) is complete bullshit. And you know what, Greg Abbott? I think it could have been better, too, if the police officers actually fucking did anything. Yeah. Or I don't know if there was any kind of legislation around buying two fucking assault rifles within three mm-hmm. days of each other i don't and know and a fuck ton of ammunition yeah. all at one time yeah so that's good that's a wonderful thing to say to grieving parents and a grieving Greg nation Abbott. this could have been worse yeah oh good good great sir uh senator ted cruz had many thoughts and prayers to offer tweeting heidi and i are lifting up in prayer the entire uvalde committee sorry entire uvalde community during this devastating time And we mourn the lives that were taken by this act of evil. I hope Ted Cruz dies. (laughs) Sam. I fucking hate Ted Cruz. He's a horrible person. He's a horrible person. Oh, my God. He's, I think we, did we say this on the podcast that he just seems like he's the sweatiest person in the entire world? Like, I feel like the amount of fucking body sweat that comes off of this man is like oceans worth of sweat. (laughs) It Uh, literally is. And then also he's just the grossest fucking most terrible person in the entire world i fucking hate ted cruz yeah well (laughs) he went on to say democrats and the media propose solutions that try to restrict the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizen that doesn't work it's not effective it doesn't prevent crime you know what else doesn't prevent crime ted not doing jack shit at all ever about this situation that continues happening like daily in our country hey you know what ted cruz the actual constitution says that people have the right to bear arms and form militias to overthrow yeah. government tyranny yeah uh so it's not really anything to having to do with like the actual being able to purchase a gun mm-hmm. uh so mm-hmm. maybe read the constitution once in a while maybe chief. <laughs> the constitution you love so fucking hard also you know what else ted cruz fuck you ted cruz has received one $176,274 in campaign donations from the NRA. So, you know, his fucking thoughts and prayers is a literally just spitting in the face of the parents who have lost these children yeah. and the parents of, of anybody that's lost a child in a school shooting. So... Thanks, Ted. You're you're fucking doing amazing. Doing amazing. I know. I hope that your uh, thoughts and prayers and like your grieving is comforted by all that fucking money mm-hmm. you got from the NRA. Mm-hmm. Like, hope you can fuck wipe you, your tears with your blood covered dollars. Fuck you. Uh, Mitch McConnell, who has received one million two hundred seventy six thousand one hundred thirty nine dollars from the NRA. Ooh. Yeah, whopping. There's. Just wait, because the next one's worse. Uh, also gave a heart wrenching tweet about thought and prayers. Mitt Romney, who has taken $13,647,676 from the NRA, also offered prayers and condolences, but at least acknowledged that uh, the prayers and condolences were grossly inadequate, as he put it. Oh, wow. Well, Thanks, thank you, Mitt. Mitt. That's, That's so nice. Wow. Yeah. You're so self-aware. <laughs> You're such a woke Republican. It's crazy. <laughs> I fucking, I hate all of them. Mm, uh, yeah. Mitch McConnell died. Ted Cruz died. Mitt Romney probably die um die yeah i mean i don't know die or like realize how fucking much of a goddamn hypocrite you're being yeah yeah uh joe biden who is the literal president of the united states had this to offer 
Quote, as a nation, we have to ask, when in God's name are we going to stand up to the gun lobby? When in God's name will we do what we all know in our gut needs to be done? I don't know, Joe. Sign a fucking executive <laughs> order. You are literally the president. I don't know, Joe. You fucking run the country. Like, like what the fuck do you fuck mean? Do you when mean? in God's name? How about today? How about right fucking now? Like, immediately. Or are you asking me? Like, are you asking me what, like, when are we going to do? I don't fucking know, Joe. Joe, you are the leader of the free world. You are the single solitary person who, if wanted something to be done about this, could get it done immediately. What the fuck? Immediately. It's such a fucking dumbass, like, publicity. Everything's just fucking PR. Yes. It's all just PR with motherfucking politicians. Oh, my God. I hope they all fucking die, dude. I I hate it. Yep. I I hate it. I fucking hate it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for literally doing like absolutely nothing. The not even the bare minimum. Like literally it's, not even the bare minimum. It's thank you for doing the like the thing that's going to make you look good for yeah. like a tiny portion of like liberals who are like see Joe Biden's on fucking Instagram. Exactly. Like I don't know. It's just I know. Yeah, I, I know. Fucking hate and actually it. not even doing the bare minimum because the majority of them are like receiving money from the 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 fucking NRA. association that's like most responsible for all of this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's absolutely fucking unhinged. Yeah, uh, the shooting has erupted a national debate about gun control once again. That stands to result in no action until these politicians decide to remove their heads from out of their asses. <laughs> God, super NRA pilled politicians. I, yeah. My God. <laughs> Ugh. Ooh, man. But, you know, at I least... I laugh so I don't cry. <laughs> I know. At least Ted Cruz gets to go on his fucking vacation every month or whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, at least he gets to have... Um, the, I don't... Honestly, I was going to say at least he gets to have missionary sex with his wife, but I don't think that they've ever <laughs> fucked. Probably not. I think maybe... He's too sweaty. He's way too... He's slithering around, <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Ugh. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, take it away, Taylor. Is that all? Wow. That's okay. Finn. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, Phoebe. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's not a pleasure. It's it's never never good. Um. Yeah. So uh, I will take it away. But before I take it away, let's let these ads take it away. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> take it away. Empty silent space. Woo. Ads. ads. What's up, sluts? <laughs> oh, sorry, I have uh, been, <laughs> and uh, but we're good. We're gonna be we're gonna be jumping in oh, some yeah. more sad stuff. Um, yeah, I I feel like the trigger warning should have extended from the last episode, oh, but you know we didn't say anything. But I it's, mean, again, we're talking about mass shootings. I'm sure you you know. Yeah. To tune out if it's gonna be upsetting. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, so last week I did, or I was talking about incel sh- killings and mass shootings. Mm-hmm. Um, so pivot- pivoting over to a different side of the same coin as last week, this week we're going to be talking about far-right mass shootings and murders. Um, I don't have to tell you about how I am worried for the state of our country because of the alt- because of the alt-right and how it continues to grow and reproduce like wildfire. Mm-hmm. Um, It is uh, reproducing inside these online communities and forums, kind of like what we were talking about, that continues to radicalize more and more people. And as I said last week, many people who are incels also get roped into other fascist and racist ideologies because it all kind of stems from the ultra-conservative mindset Mm -hmm. and a longing for a time and a place in our country's past that doesn't actually exist. (laughs) So, So, and if it did exist, it was never like, you know... Again, like, America was never great No, for, you know, it was great for white people for a short time, and it, specifically white men for a short time, you yeah. know, like, yeah. so, but anyway, so yeah, we're talking about more of the alt-right side of things rather than, like, the incel side of things, mm-hmm. um, but starting farther back again, our first, our first story today took place on August 6th of 1993. 22-year-old Kenneth Jr. French walked into a uh, Luigi's restaurant in Fayetteville, North Carolina, 
using a Savage 67 12 gauge pump action shotgun. He took the lives of four people and injured an additional seven. Two of the victims were 73 year old owner Peter Paris and his wife Ethel Paris, the owners of the location who were found behind the counter holding each other in their arms. Oh. And when I read that, I cried. <laughs> yeah. It was so upsetting. Oh my goodness. Uh, French was a military man, and it is believed that the reason he targeted this location was only due to the proximity to Fort Bragg, the base where he was stationed at. Mm. On his person, he also had a twenty two caliber rifle. Mm -hmm. Upon entering the location, he was screaming homophobic slurs and saying, and I'm going to quote this, just know I'm bisexual so I can say the slur. <laughs> he was saying, Clinton letting the faggots in the military. Oh. And other similar phrases. A nearby off-duty police officer heard the shots and called for backup, and then he eventually took down French. French was charged with four counts of first-degree murder and three counts of assault with a deadly weapon. He was sentenced to four consecutive life sentences and an additional 35 years. Hmm. Um, and that, so that was around the time, um, of course, being in 1993, mm. when Bill Clinton had lifted the ban on, or the... The yeah, the ban on uh, gay people in the military. Mm -hmm. Um, what did, did I don't remember? Did, did Bill Clinton introduce the don't ask, don't tell? I think so. Yeah, so it was kind of like a don't don't say anything, but like yeah, gay people can be in the military yeah. kind of thing. So obviously, pretty bad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty homophobic. Um, yeah, so that was pretty awful. Mm -hmm. Mark Anthony Stroman was responsible for a killing spree that took place from September 16th, 2001 to October 5th uh, of that same year. A documentary about the man stated that he was married at 15 years old what? and began having children shortly after, um, and that he lived in, a, in Texas. He was also a member of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, oh. which is a neo-Nazi group. Mm -hmm. So, good stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Like, there was a documentary, um, in, you know, on the articles I was reading, it said that he was uh, married at 15, which... Weird. Actually, I did find out, because, again, I was uh, looking into some shit about Waco. With parents' consent, people as young as 14 years old can get married in Texas. That's at least insane. at this time. I don't know if the laws have changed at all, but... Uh, yeah, like the guy who ran the Waco cult, mm -hmm. David Koresh is his name. Yes. He married a 14-year-old girl. Oh. Good. And it was completely legal in yeah. Texas law. Wow. So, real fun. Wow. Good stuff. Always a good time. Um, anywho, on September 16th, he walked into a convenience store in Pleasant Grove, a suburb of Dallas, Texas, called Mom's Grocery, and murdered the man working at the store named Wakar Hassan. It is believed he targeted all the places and men he did because they were Muslim. Mm -hmm. September 21st, he walked into a gas station in the same area and shot Reyes Bahu Bahuyan, I believe is how you say it. My apologies if I'm pronouncing that incorrect. Bahuyan in the face with a shotgun. Reyes actually survived but was left partially blind in his right eye. Mm. So another person got shot in the face but actually did survive. That's so wild. Crazy. On October 4th, he killed 49-year-old Vasudev Patel. So it's like he kept getting away. Yeah, they didn't know who did it. He just like would walk in and shoot him. That's wild. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he, he lasted until, again, October 4th. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. He killed uh, Vasudev Patel, who was working at a gas station outside of Mesquite, Texas, with a forty four caliber handgun. This time, he did attempt to steal money from the register of the store and made a break for it. He was captured on October 5th and said he was targeting Arabs mm. uh, as revenge for 9-11. Wow. It was right after that time, yeah. Jesus. Really good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Glad that, like, the propaganda spread after 9-11 made this happen. Yeah, it was really cool that, um, you know. It made people want to murder innocent people that literally lived in America and had nothing to do with it. Yep. So, really good. Yep. He was quoted stating he had done what every American wanted to do and that uh, they we were at war with oh, 
terrorists. Oh my god. Good old war on terror. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Behuyan argued against Stroman getting the death penalty. Mm. And Stroman would later, in later years, say that Behuyan was an inspiration for him to change his views. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. I know. Behuyan, the man who lost the sight, who got shot in the face, was arguing. I, he, I didn't write the quote down, but he said something along the lines of, like, in my religion, mm-hmm. we preach forgiveness. And that's, that's what like I was what is, thinking. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Which it's like, I'm glad that he changed his views, but it's like, oh, the guy who almost killed you getting you off the hook is, like, what it took to get you to I mean, change your mind. Who knows? You know, he could have been bullshitting because yeah, he didn't want to. that's true. But... Uh, on the blog that Stroman kept, he said the shootings were not a crime of hatred, but one of passion and patriotism. No. <laughs> nope, still no, crimes. Totally, totally. Still murder. Hatred-based. Yeah. Stroman was uh, actually executed on July 20th, 2011. Oh, wow. So he did actually end up getting the death penalty, hmm. uh, even though Behuyan argued against him getting it. Interesting. Um, yeah, so, you know. Really fun and good. And this, of course, there was definitely an increase around that time of hate crimes towards people of, or Muslim people. And and again, the last person who was on here, I believe, was Hindu, um, because it was, uh, he was Indian. He was, his last name was Patel. Oh, uh uh-huh. So, yeah, even then it was like. Yeah. And that was the one where he tried to, like, rob the store. So, I don't know Mm -hmm. if that, like, influenced it. Again, I mean. Yeah. After you shoot two people. I'm sure you're kind of off the your rock, fucking yeah. rocker, you know. Also, I just think that people don't know the difference. The difference, yeah. yeah. Like people who have those types of views don't really care to figure that out. Yeah, and so. Americans are just fucking racist. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um. So, uh, this one I feel like is an interesting one. Mm. This next story that we have here. So, this is the Holocaust Memorial shooting. Oh, God. Um, It's not the worst as far as, like, death count-wise, but it's just kind of an awful story. Yeah. So, on uh, June 10th of 2009, so again, moving up in time here, Mm -hmm. 88-year-old James Wenneker von Brunn entered the United States Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. Using a slide-action rifle, he killed Special Officer Stephen Tyrone Jones before other security officers were able to subdue him and was charged with first-degree murder and firearms violations. Excuse me. He would actually die in a medical facility near the jail he was being kept at in North Carolina on January 6, 2010. Mm. He was like fucking 88 years old. Mm-hmm. Von Brunn was a commanding officer in the Navy during World War II in the Pacific Theater. Later in life, after fighting against literal fascist powers, he became a white supremacist and a Holocaust denier. Oh, my God. What? what? (laughs) How? What do you mean? How are you denying the Holocaust that you were literally (laughs) working against? I know. I know. And granted, I mean, he was in the Pacific Theater, so he's fighting against Japan. But nonetheless, it's like, you know what we were fighting against in that whole war, right? The the main point of that war was, right? (sighs) Like, how were you there during that time? And you're like, didn't happen. (laughs) How are you fighting in the war against (laughs) fucking the Holocaust and being like, nope. Nope. Didn't didn't see it myself, so. Okay. I fucking. And that's, I mean, yeah. And I know that, like, Russia was the first ones to, like, liberate the concentration camps. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are like, ooh, like, it didn't actually happen. Like, our American soldiers weren't there. It's, you know, (laughs) it's, it's bullshit. But, you know, there are people out there that believe that. It's true. Uh, he was arrested in 1981 for attempted kidnapping and hostage ta- and hostage taking of members of the Federal Reserve, which like oh my God. fuck the Federal Reserve, but maybe don't uh, <laughs> you know kidnap Hold them. Hostage, yeah. yeah, I mean not the best thing to do. In uh, 2004 to 2005, he lived in Hayden Lake, Idaho, where the Aryan Nations were based out of for a long time. Mm-hmm. That was that. I think there's that horror movie Green Room, which is based off of like, because there was like a really big, obviously in Idaho where that was stationed, there was like a bunch of neo Nazis and mm. stuff. Um, I think there's a horror movie called Green Room. It's about like a punk band that plays in that place, and they like get into a big thing with neo Nazis. Interesting. Yeah, we should watch that. Yeah, we should. 
Um, movie night. <laughs> movie night. <laughs> I'm sure his time living at that community, even after the Aryan nations were no longer present, did not help his blossoming Mm -hmm. fascism. Because, you know, you can maybe not be stationed there, but obviously everybody around there is going to be hella racist. Yeah. So, as you were saying, I don't understand how you can be around to see literal the literal rise of the Nazi party and fight on the side against them and then still hold such bigoted views. Um, It kind of blows my mind how insane this guy was. But that's, uh, yeah, that's basically the story of what happened with him. Jesus. So, And then also to go to, like, the Holocaust oh, Museum, know. like, the place where they, like, they just remember, you know, like, the, the Jewish people who passed away. Yes. Like, I, I, it's just, it's just such a fucked up thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, my God. Piece of shit. It's like, you think it's a museum. It's just, like made up you think everything in there is just made up yeah sir that government like, propaganda oh my god okay the government wants you to think that the nazis were bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah good stuff um so this one this next one is probably a story that you're more familiar with um dylan roof was mm. convicted of 33 federal hate crimes in shelby north carolina when on june 17th 2000 put 2005 but i feel like it wasn't that long ago maybe i meant 2015 mm. let me take a look here. I, yeah that seems i want to make sure i got this correct yep 2015 my bad so yeah on june 17th 2015 he went to a bible study at the emmanuel aem church and open fired with a glock 41 45 caliber handgun on a group of people who were also attending that bible study He fled the scene, and the shooting lasted approximately six minutes. Six women and three men were killed, and all of them were black. Mm. Roof's Facebook page included him wearing a jacket decorated with two emblems popular among American white supremacists. Mm. Mm. Roof had reportedly told friends and neighbors that he planned on killing people, but nobody took him seriously. Oh, my God. And no time frame was given on when he made this confession to those friends. So I don't know how long that was before Mm -hmm. uh, he did end up carrying out the shooting. But I have a feeling that he did not get the mental help that he needed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Bad. A website found registered in his name called www.lastrhodesian.com. This is a reference to the old British colony of Rhodesia which is now modern-day Zimbabwe, mm. that had a, a special unit of military of military forces specific, specifically for keeping a white ruling class oh, hand yeah. over the nation called the Celis Scouts. As I'm sure you can imagine, a military unit dedicated to keeping white people in control of a territory is something that online racists like quite a bit. <laughs> and there have been many t-shirts and references made to it in the past on such sites. Yikes. So that's what yeah, his blog was uh, referring to. On the website was found a manifesto on his opinions on blacks, Jews, Hispanics, and East Asians, oh. as well as photos of Roof with his many guns and a Confederate battle flag. So once again, just like, hey, here's here's everything right here for here's you to see. All the things yep. right on the internet that like, you nobody knew. Pretty cut and dry. Yeah. Um, he stated that he became, and I'm quoting here, racially aware his words, not mine. After the 2012 killing of Trayvon Martin. Oh, my fucking God. Where he believed George Zimmerman was in the right. He decided to do some research and stumbled upon a website called Council of Conservative Citizens. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, and read facts about black on white. Again, quotes here. Oh, my God. Crime. The Southern Poverty Law Center identifies the Council of Conservative Citizens as a hate group and yeah. a <laughs> and a reincarnation of the old white citizen councils from the 50s and 60s. Sounds correct. To give you a glimpse of the kind of thing this website told Roof, here's a direct quote taken from their website in 2001 that I found on the Southern Poverty Law Center website. And it says, God is the author of racism. God is the one who divided mankind into different types, ellipses, 
mixing the races is rebellious rebelliousness against God. <laughs> that was oh on my... their website in 2001. Oh, okay. And again, once again, oh, okay. and listeners, I know I say this fucking probably every single episode, uh-huh. uh, these places, like, people don't take them seriously. Mm-mm. People don't take these internet communities seriously. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a bunch of fucking weird fucking incel virgin weirdos, <laughs> yeah. neckbeard weirdos that yeah. are, like, typing in their forums. And and I get it. Like, you know, it's not something that people, like, run into often. But these things happen because of these yeah, websites. These things true. happen because of websites like this fucking place, the Council of Conservative Citizens. Yeah, that's telling you that racism is, like, a divine exactly practice or whatever. And... I just again, I I just always stress like yeah, this stuff is real. It is actually happening right know, in front of us. And we like, need to <laughs> look at it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Like they, the amount of times that people are blatantly stating exactly what they want to do and what's motivating them to do those things, it is mm-hmm. right there. Exactly, exactly. And yet, still people are like, well, you know, like it's not a big problem. Like the mm-hmm. right's not a big. Why can't why can't Republicans and Democrats just have a beer together? <laughs> like. <laughs> Just shit like that. Why can't we all get along? Exactly. It's like, Um, oh. Because you want to murder people for, like, no reason. Yeah. Because you probably want to murder me and you. Like, you want to murder us. Like, yeah. (laughs) uh, Roof was planning the attack for about six months, and he chose the church for its significance in black history. Mm. So, that was the story of Dylan Roof. Again, that was probably one that you remember. Mm hmm. Uh, this brings me to my last story of the day. On May 14th, 2022, 10 black people were shot and killed at a Topps Friendly Market store in Buffalo, New York. Mm-hmm. The accused was six was sorry, 18-year-old Peyton S. Gendron, who was charged with first-degree murder and pleaded not guilty on May 19th. He was using a modified Bushmaster XM-15 mm. rifle. There it is again. There it is. The shooter live streamed part of the shooting on Twitch, and before entering the building, he stated, and I quote, just gotta go for it to the viewers of his live stream. He then entered the parking lot and killed three people and moved into the store and shot eight more, killing an additional six. Gendron was known for being very eccentric at school when he showed up for his in-person classes, which he didn't do often. He would often show up to his high school wearing a full hazmat suit, as well as other costumes and accessories. Hmm. Um, I don't know if that had to do with, like, COVID or what exactly that was all about. Mm. But, again, he's known for being a little eccentric, I suppose. Hmm. He visited Buffalo before the attack and actually dropped off a bunch of ammunition with a friend, saying he was making space at his house and that he would retrieve them at a later time. It was not made clear in any of the reports if this ammo was picked up before the shooting or not, but he did visit the same supermarket months earlier as well as the day before the shooting before getting asked to leave by the store manager. Um, Gendron was dressed in full tactical gear, including body armor and camouflage and a large backpack. The gun he used for the shooting was obtained legally, but the modification made to the guns the gun was illegal. Mm-hmm. The shooter left a 180-page manifesto that included the whole works of fascist bullshit. He was anti-immigration as well as anti-Semitic, eco-fascist, ethno-nationalist, and neo-Nazi. Gendron claims he was authoritarian left, which again, big air quotes. <laughs> Which probably is just him saying he was like a socialist. So he's like, I was under the authoritarian (laughs) left. Okay. So he was probably a socialist until he was radicalized on sites like 4chan, Mm. which made him uh, lean into his far-right beliefs. He also showed support for other far-right shooters, including Dylan Roof, who we just (laughs) talked about. Oh, my God. In his posts around the internet, uh, it was found that he had killed and mutilated at least one cat. Oh, my God. And a quote from his online postings and diary, he stated this. I would like to say that I had quite a normal childhood, but that is not the case. He also, and then he also said, it is not that I actually dislike other people. It's just that they make me feel so uncomfortable. I've probably spent actual years of my life just being online. And to be honest, I regret it. 
I didn't go to friends' houses often or go to any parties or whatever. Every day after school, I would just go home and play games and watch YouTube, mostly by myself. In another entry, he added, If I could go back, maybe I'd tell myself to get the fuck off 4chan and get an actual life. Mm. So, again, this person was very self-aware. Like, he knew what he was doing. He knew that, like, it wasn't good for him to be online that much. And he still went through with it. Wow. So... But that's the most recent one. Mm-hmm. And again, that's the one that I was talking about where, like, I had heard about the shooting. I had no idea that it was, like, that focused on, like, f- uh, fascist ideology. Yeah. I didn't know that he live streamed part of it. Yeah, I it's know. crazy. Puck. And, uh, again, just another instance of, like, why does 4chan exist? Yeah. <laughs> like, why can somebody post a, a manifesto about all of this and, I don't know. <laughs> still buy guns and it's fun and good and uh yeah nothing nothing is bad everything is great in our country love it here Mm -hmm. no no notes really no i'm I'm, (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh i hope everybody at home is doing okay (laughs) me too me too it's been a very stressful couple of weeks i feel like seriously and I don't know, yeah, just, like, it really bums me out, and I know, like, a lot of people are scared, too, like, you don't know when this kind of shit's gonna fucking Mm -hmm. happen, and, yeah, just, you know, be safe if you can. Yeah, yeah, it's It's just, like, sad that, I don't know, (laughs) we have to think about this as much as we do. I agree, it's very unfortunate that Mm -hmm. it's such a big portion of our lives, Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, Finn, that's all I have here. Damn. So, Ooh. good stuff, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Come back next week for not as yeah, sad of an more, episode. Definitely more lighthearted and not quite mm-hmm. as uh, close to home, I guess. Yeah. Or There'll be more jokes. <laughs> recently open of a wound. Yeah, exactly. Um, But yeah, we will plug quickly and then get out of here. For sure. Well you want to tweet at us you can go to twitter.com and search at remarks pod that is where you can get our twitter you can leave us a review on apple mm-hmm, podcasts mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as well as check out my youtube channel which is called the lefty agenda Woo. you can follow us on instagram at remarks podcast and on tiktok of the same handle at remarks podcast and you can join our patreon if you so wish uh, again for some more lighter hearted content <laughs> absolutely a uh, big shout out to our patrons we have justin vass we have andrew vass and we have Tere soltero so thanks y'all so much you are the greatest yeah we love you we love you Woo-hoo. and thanks for listening okay love, love you bye, bye.